Those of us interested in the intersection of social science and policy see the need for fundamental research that can be applied to solving problems in today's society and in the society of the future. The Louis de la Part Florida Mental Health Institute, FMHI, is part of the College of Behavioral and Community Sciences at the University of South Florida. FMHI has been actively translating behavioral health research into practical services and policy applications for almost 40 years. To support the Institute's research needs, the FMHI Library has built a mental health collection that highlights research into services and policy. This video explains, first, why such a collection is important, and second, what we mean when we talk about mental health services research and mental health policy. First, I would like to explain why it is important to create such a collection, moving through the international perspective to the national perspective and then to the response by the state of Florida. The World Health Organization, that is the WHO, defines mental health as, quote, a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. End quote. Research estimates that 14% of the global disease burden is due to mental disorders. The WHO estimates that about half of mental disorders begin before the age of 14, and approximately 20% of the world's children and adolescents suffer from mental disorders. Similar types of disorders are reported across cultures. Further, mental illnesses also increase the risk for developing many physical illnesses and are major risk factors for communicable and non-communicable diseases and unintentional and intentional injury. At the same time, many health conditions increase the risk for mental disorders and complicate diagnosis and treatment. At a national level, the United States affirms the importance of mental illnesses as a significant public health issue, starting with the National Mental Health Act. Public Law 79-487 was one of the first major organizational and financial commitments by the United States federal government to behavioral health policy and services research. In the bold new approach message to Congress in 1963, then President Kennedy called for intensifying the search for the causes of mental disorders, strengthening resources and more highly skilled human resources in mental health, and improving programs which served individuals with mental disorders. The President's New Freedom Commission recommended a fundamental transformation of the nation's approach to mental health care. The Commission offered this vision, a, quote, future when everyone with a mental illness will recover, a future when mental illnesses can be prevented or cured, a future when mental illnesses are detected early, and a future when everyone with a mental illness at any stage of life has access to effective treatment and supports, essentials for living, working, learning, and participating fully in the community." End quote. Florida's response to the National Mental Health Legislation, which was established in 1967, the Florida Mental Health Institute, to serve as its mental health services research facility. With a focus on what is known about best practice and evidence-based medicine, the FMHI Library collects materials that examine the gaps between research and policy and services delivery. Now that we have an understanding of the importance of studying mental illnesses, let's look at definitions. Mental health services research looks at clinical research and service systems research. Clinical research examines clinical treatments under highly controlled experimental conditions. It includes factors such as costs, reimbursement mechanisms, treatment ideologies, and personal and organizational interests that affect how providers actually deliver services. Service systems research is the study of the impact of the organization on health services, their financing, and their management on the quality, access to, and outcomes of care that should be delivered efficiently, economically, and equitably. It encompasses a broad and eclectic set of questions and issues. Service systems research looks at identifying the nature and scope of local needs, matching local services to needs, structuring integrated care that reaches the consumer, allocating financial resources, the economics of financing of care through cost efficacy studies, and providing proper protections and incentives to use services appropriately. Service systems research also addresses legal and legislative issues, policy analysis, outcomes, impact, and implementation, recovery paradigms, civil rights, stigma, 
and strategies for changing attitudes. Both areas encompass population studies, for example, refugees, migration, and diaspora. They also look at epidemiology, population health, including disaster studies, both man-made and natural, that impact people's health. Both fields of research apply qualitative, quantitative, and econometric methods of assessment. Mental health policy encompasses all of these areas, whether it is at a local, state, regional, national, or international level. Mental health policy coordinates all programs and services related to mental health through a common vision. It defines the vision for the future mental health of a population, establishing coordinates for programs and services related to mental health across all governmental levels and service providers. Mental health policy is intricately linked to human rights legislation and standards, as well as the larger health policy and legislation area to national and international law. Mental health law, regulations, and declarations set standards for implementation, enforcement, and policy development. In the year 2000, the United Nations Millennium Summit produced the Millennium Development Goals, which are increasingly recognized as the overarching development framework for health and mental health at the international level. Both the United Nations and the World Health Organization stress the importance of treating mental illness to improve population health by focusing on vulnerable and at-risk populations. In the United States, a report entitled FY 2009 Administration Research and Development Budget Priorities, published by the Executive Office of the President, Office of Management and Budget, places federal emphases on interdisciplinary and international social science research activities that enhance the health of our nation's people to reduce the burden of illness and increase productivity while respecting the inherent dignity and value of every human life. Any population can become an at-risk population, since everyone is potentially vulnerable or at risk, to developing a mental health problem. However, the risk is greater for those with the least social status, social capital, and human capital resources. These individuals are often unable to prevent or ameliorate the origins and consequences of poor physical, psychological, or social health. With the many diverse cultures and the increase in refugee, immigrant, migratory, and displaced populations within the United States, the completeness and accuracy of information on the health status of vulnerable populations vary substantially across groups. Services research seeks to understand the prevalence and incidence of mental illnesses in these populations. Longitudinal and epidemiologic reviews of services and illnesses, for example, require the analysis of the course of individual disorders over time, which may be lost when they are embedded in general summary statistics. Vulnerable populations include many segments of society, not only those persons with mental illnesses, substance abuse disorders, or developmental disabilities. Vulnerable populations include persons who are homeless, and note please that estimate has reached as high as 1 million plus men, women, or children homeless on any given night. Vulnerable populations include persons who have HIV AIDS, an increasing proportion of immigrants who are refugees carrying with them the physical, psychological, and social wounds of war, children who have suffered physical, sexual, or emotional abuse, and victims of domestic violence. Perpetrators of intentional acts of violence can define host populations who may suddenly find themselves at risk. Most recently, the numerous man-made and natural disasters, such as the Oklahoma City bombing, 9-11, Hurricane Katrina, and the tornadoes in the Midwest of the United States, the recent earthquake in China, the cyclone in Myanmar, and the tsunami in Indonesia, have resulted in large numbers of displaced populations, which have the consequence of a significant burden of disease, socioeconomic vulnerability, and marginalized health care access. Further, the mental and social health burdens present a formidable challenge for health infrastructures. Long-range and emergency recovery efforts must now understand at-risk and vulnerable populations in a more global context. Services delivery must address international models of rights-based care, as well as new models of treatment, such as a tripartite framework of gateway, core, and ancillary services, with parallel screening and assessment, treatment, and supportive services, including health promotion and training of health workers. 
Within the behavioral, health, and social sciences disciplines, the health services and policy research conducted at the Delapart FMHI Institute and across USF provides important insight into the relationships between environmental, biological, physiological, and cultural influences when providing care to populations, especially at-risk or vulnerable populations, across the lifespan and across state, national, and international systems.